Alright, today's video is going to be a short summary on the March 28th, 1984 Carolinas tornado outbreak. This was the worst outbreak for the Carolinas in 100 years and one month. On top of that, it still is the worst outbreak for the Carolinas to this day. That includes the super outbreaks of 74 and 2011 as well. First picture here, of course, uh, from Wilmington Radar, showing a supercell already that did produce an F4. Obviously, starting with the overview, there were 24 confirmed tornadoes. In total, they killed 57 people and injured more than 1,200. On top of all this, it inflicted 578 million US dollars in damage. That is 1984 US dollars. All of the tracks are seen here at the top right and the weather system at 1 p.m. so 1300 is seen here at the bottom right. There were seven e there's seven F4s in just 10 hours. This outbreak was only 10 hours long and that is Absolutely insane. Hello there, 22. Know that you're a Carolinian. This outbreak had conditions very similar to the tri state tornado outbreak that occurred in 1925. Granted, we only know about the conditions of the 25 outbreak due to digging for years and years. But what we do know about this 84 outbreak at the Cape was around the 2,000 to 3,000 joules per kilogram range. Its pressure was all the way down to 992 millibars, which is... Ah! Thank you, host, 00312, for, for following. I appreciate that. <laughs> 992 millibars is rare for the area, with the exception of... Her hurricanes most low pressures even when they do produce outbreaks such as this are not that low we're talking usually only a little bit higher so like anywhere from i'd say 995 to nine to triple nines and last but not least the outbreak occurred right in between the middle of the low pressures so you have your aloft uh, low pressure here in s more south of the surface low pressure, which is at the Kentucky Tennessee line, state line. And as seen in the tracks here, just one cell produced 13 large tornadoes. All of these are F2 and above, with the one F2 being this tiny one right here in South Carolina. So, again, here's the weather system at 1 p.m. and at and all the way at 2:14 p.m. So 14, 14, sorry, yeah, 14, 14. I'm second guessing myself. There is already a tornado watch for the area, and the I believe it was the SBC, either that or it was uh Wilming. Yeah, it was apologies. It was Wilmington NWS which converted the uh, medium outlook to high, which was, which was completely unexpected and unprecedented at the time. Today, that is more expected because that gives you the indication that there is a higher threat, of course. And during this short summary, there will be four notables. Let's get into those. These are all go try to be chronological. So, but anyway, the Bennettsville, South Carolina to Laurenburg, North Carolina, F4, killed seven and injured just around 100 people as it traversed 27 kilometers, which is relatively short distance, but this is still enough for. Around the 
the Carolinian state line, it was estimated to be around 2 miles or 3.2 kilometers across, which is an absolute monster. This tornado in South Carolina devastated an apartment complex and a shopping center was completely destroyed. In fact, here in this bottom left, there's a steel beam from that shopping center. Let's see, there's just 20 feet of it that's above the ground because it is 8 feet into the earth. That is, um, <laughs> that's very scary. That's a javelin for a tornado, that's what that is. Seen here, of course, as as expected today, as we should all know, tornadoes will carry mobile homes and also completely obliter obliterate them much more easily than houses. And this trailer home landed on top of what appears to be half a dozen vehicles. And below that you could see some... Let's see, I actually didn't read this here. That is that is the shopping center that was obliterated in Bennettsville, South Carolina. This next one is another F4. The east of Bennettsville, South Carolina, to Parkton, North Carolina, F4. This F4 also reached to 2 miles, again 3.2 kilometers wide, but not just once, it did this quite a few times in its life. It injured near 400, but thank thankfully only killed 4 people, and it coursed much longer at 72 kilometers. Um, we're talking, the devastation we're talking here is that Red Springs was absolutely devastated. Every single structure that was not destroyed in Red Springs received at least F1 type damage. This tornado also very unfortunately occurred. Uh, touchdown only 10 minutes after the previous tornado did and paralleled its path by less than 8 kilometers. They were that close. However, they did not merge and they did not interact in any way as far as we know. There are no pictures of this tornado, so I, ma I actually managed to find a newspaper article about it with an interesting diagram of how uh, tornadoes work. Some devastation from one of the tornadoes here. And I hate that I also hate this art this article because it says that there's pictures on the other side and I don't have the other side and I'd love to see those. Unfortunately, we don't have any pictures for this tornado, the Lagrange to La to Greenville, North Carolina F4. But this this one was the deadliest of the outbreak, killing 16 on top of also injuring just over 150 people. Known to have a max width of 1.2 kilometers as it treks almost 75 kilometers, I believe it was 74 and a half. Portions of ECU, East Carolina University, were severely damaged as those portions of ECU did receive a direct hit. The, I believe this is the last notable here, the Winsboro, South Carolina area, so the Winsboro area, South Carolina F4. There were a total of three three total tornadoes, which caused five deaths, but we do not know how many injuries were inflicted. We do know that it's estimated to be a, a maximum of almost two kilometers wide, but 1.85. So almost, but not quite. We don't know for which one of the three tornadoes this was though we do what we do know is that there is a i guess an average track of 11 kilometers per tornado and a total of 34 kilometers 
And we also know that these twister paths were linked by some very intense downbursts that were not easy to decipher from tornado damage. These downbursts and the tornadoes destroyed 24 trailers, so trailer homes, somehow destroyed two times more homes, despite the fact that I just said that trailers are destroyed more easily, so haha, you've been lied to, you've been clickbaited, I bet you feel stupid now, and, <laughs> sorry, uh, and this also destroyed four businesses. Yes, that was the last notable. The significance of this outbreak is a lot, actually. Surprisingly large. Again, this is the largest outbreak for the Carolinas to date. Not just for 1984, but to date. Yes, you've, you all have been debated by me saying that trailer is more easily destroyed. But you can compare the intensity of this outbreak to a small-scale 74 Super. There were 12 intense twisters in just 10 hours. Intense is F3 and above. There were zero F5s. For comparison, 74 Super had 30 violent F4 plus tornadoes in just 18 hours. So not too far off. This is noted by Grizulis and others, such as Dr. Ted Fujita, for the similarity, like I said before at the beginning, to the 1925 outbreak, specifically with the conditions that were there. And very surprisingly, despite this being 1984, there are very little aftermath photos, or just photos in general, I had a very, very hard time finding aftermath and actual tornado photos from this outbreak, which definitely makes it a lot less fun to research, I'll be honest. But, I mean, I still like to cover these nonetheless. That is all that I have today for this short summary, though. Again, the worst outbreak for the Carolinas in recorded history to date. The supers impacted, what was it, um, more of Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, more than the Carolinas. So that's why this outbreak what is the most intense for the Carolinas. That is all that I have for you guys today, and I'll see you guys in the next video.